Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Sabers, and this is just going to be a quick vo video to show the uh, the new V2 MHS parts from the Custom Saber Shop. Uh, as you know, I use MHS parts a lot in my uh, Custom Saber designs. Um, well, this is going to be a new, smaller version of the MHS system, and these are these are some sample parts that were sent to me, and I decided to use them to build a saber for my son for playing around. He's five. Uh, so, uh, they're, as you can see, they're a lot smaller. I mean, the Janus Saber is a saber based on MHS parts. That's quite a small MHS saber. Of course, the more regular or large size MHS saber is my old Rantuck saber using M modified MHS parts. So it's quite a bit smaller, um, which uh, presents challenges to get everything to fit and to work. Um, but the electronics are getting smaller and smaller every year. So what wasn't possible a couple of years ago uh, is very possible now. So this is a really good uh, functional saber with a crystal shard sound card in it. And uh, works really great. And I will uh, I'll show you some of the tips and tricks just on an initial install. I'm sure there's going to be some other ideas that come out uh, for installing electronics in a saber like this. Uh, but I'll show you what I did. So I've got the saber taken apart, and uh, I can show you a little bit of what I've done uh, to install. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is the switch. Now you'll notice that there's a milled flute that I did there. So what I've done is, uh, and I'll show you a picture of this. I, I machined. A, a plastic slug to slide into this section before I put the blade holder on and I'm uh, in that that uh, plastic slug that's about an inch long and an inch in uh, outside diameter I'm, I milled uh, a quarter inch slot that I could fit a little tactile momentary switch in that uh, that looks like this it was a uh, one of these tactile momentary switches I use with the Ascend and with the Bad Axe now at Custom Saber Shop they do sell a similar tactile momentary switch with a longer plunger that you could use and maybe cut down the plunger for the length that you want what I did was I I milled the slot and then seated the switch inside with the wires and with a couple of layers of foam underneath so that I can compress the switch in order to slide it into the tube and then it'll pop up through the hole just enough so it was a little tricky to, to kind of get that to sit right, um, but that once it's sitting in there, um, it works really well. So that's how I did the switch. You could do something similar by drilling a hole halfway through, uh, or uh, or milling a slot like I did. Um, so that's uh, that's one way. You could even just uh, you know just drill a straight hole and have the long plunger switch sticking all the way up. I just wanted it to be something that didn't activate easily when you're gripping it, that you had to really stick your thumb in there to get it to activate. So that's how I did the switch. The battery holder I used is the same one that you can get for an 18650 cell from the Custom Saver Shop. What I did was I took a, a piece of zap strap and I glued it, Gorilla glued it, on the outside like that to create a loop so that I could pull the battery holder out of the saber body. Um, so that it takes a lot of while for the glue to set, but once it sets it gives you a good good lever. Um, I've also got a, a layer of this. Um, this clear tube guard that is made for fluorescent light tubes that I often put inside MHS parts because it fits so perfectly. Well, I cut a sleeve of that that uh, that I can slide into the tube, and it basically just covers the battery and keeps it isolated from the saber body, so that while you're bashing it around, if you've got a worn section on your battery like I do, it doesn't short circuit against the body of the saber. So that's what I've done with that. Of course, my wires are all run and zap strapped, so that when I slide my sa my battery cable or battery case inside, these wires will, will fold together um, and uh, I can I can basically put them underneath the battery holder and slide. I did want to point out too that with uh, a design like this that's going to be, um, the wires are going to be moving every time you change the battery, you want to make sure to hot glue gun, use a little bit of hot glue dabs on where your wires connect to the board. Not a lot so you're not smearing the board, but just a little bit of hot glue and you can see here on the white wires. As these wires move, you don't want the solder contacts moving. You want the wires to, to, to move, but not the solder contacts, because eventually they would break off. Use a little bit of hot glue, and they, they'll stay good for a long, long time. This thing goes in, that goes in, it starts to slide in. Now I've mounted my uh, crystal shard. You could also use the Nano Biscotti sound card. I've kind of glued it. Uh, I've soldered it to the wire connections, and then I've hot glued it to the battery pack, because it doesn't take a whole lot of abuse once it's in there. It just needs to be solid. As you can see, the whole thing just kind of slides in. Um, so that that works really well. I'm really happy with how that is. It's a little challenging to get the battery to come out when you want it to, but as I slide it all the way in there, it's nice and secure. Now with the speaker, this was a fun thing I kind of discovered. Uh, with this O-ring, and I'll give you the, the Fastenal number. I don't know if you can see it there. That's the uh, product number if you look it up. It's just a 1 16th O-ring. I think it's a one and a quarter inch outside diameter. I'm not sure. 
but if you look it up, that's the number of the O-ring that I used. Um, it actually uh, holds the speaker perfectly inside that, that section. And the speaker, the premium speaker, fits and pops right in there. So your pommel actually holds the speaker. Like it's not going to fall out. What I've done is I've used some hot glue gun dabs on the contact point, so if the contact points do touch metal, they're not going to short circuit. And uh, what I do is I'm, I basically make sure that the, the O-ring is going to sit like that. I put the O-ring in the threaded section here. I don't know if you can see that there. I have the O-ring sitting in there. And then what I do is I bunch my wires. And this is a little technique that uh, you're going to need to learn to do with with threaded saver bodies. Before you thread a part on, what you want to do, because I'm going to twist it this way to thread it on. So to start, I'm going to unthread it however many turns I think it will take. And I'm untwisting my wires, twisting them the wrong way, so that when I'm screwing it on, I'm not bunching up my wires too much. So now I tuck my wires in there, put the pommel in. Now I'm screwing it in so those wires are untwisting so that they're not catching and they're not snagging. And when I've got my, with the O-ring, it actually holds the speaker really se securely in there. I've got a, quite a nice seal, nice loud saber, because it's got the 1.5 watt premium speaker. And uh, yeah, that's my basic install for uh, the MHS V2 system. Pretty happy with it.